Friendly Neighborhood Gamer here, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a bunch of glitches that are still currently working after the most recent patch. There's going to be a lot of content in this video, so really quickly, I want to shout out to some of the new subscribers, and then we'll get right into the video. Thank you, Elite RPG Adventures, Quincy Jones, Zero Run, Knock'em Dead Kid, John Waltman, Tom Yang, Kim Christensen, Leo Duncan, Christensen Tim, Ryan Morgan, and Nathan Pine. Thank you so much. Now, with that said, let's get right into the video. So the first glitch that we're going to be doing today is we are going to be doing the duplication glitch. I'm going to be doing the Xbox version, but I'll leave the PS version and the PC version in the description. So I'm going to get into my inventory here and just show you what I'm going to be duping. I'm going to be duping my hero runes here just because I am full on Lord runes. So I was just going to do these with the hero runes for now, just for the purpose of this video. So what you need for this is you need a friend or you can have two consoles or two PCs with two different Elden Ring profiles to do this on. Then how you want to do this, you want to have your friend summon you or you summon your friend. Now you want to summon the person that's going to be having most of the items on them. And this does work both ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my stuff that I want the person to have. Now whoever's world you're going to, they're going to be the ones that are going to be able to drop the most stuff because they have most of it stored in their inventory and they can drop it before you get there. And basically what I mean by that is they can go into their storage. So when I join the world, they can pre-drop a lot of the stuff. Whereas since I'm joining their world, I can't pre-drop anything since I can't sit at the side of grace, nor can the other player once you have joined their world. But whoever's summoning the other player can pre-drop the stuff because they can sit at the side of grace beforehand to get all the stuff ready to drop. Okay, so once the person has dropped the stuff that they want the other player to pick up, this is where the duplication method comes in, because we're going to be deleting a save. So from there, what you're going to do is you're going to press the middle Xbox button. If you're on Xbox, go down to Elden Ring, click on Manage Game and Add-ons, and then go to Saved Data. Once you're there, you're going to click on your profile, and you're going to delete from console. Do not press delete everywhere. And then from there, you're just going to relaunch the game. Once you relaunch the game, it's going to kick you back to wherever you are for when you last quit the game and then got back into the game. If you want it to save to the cloud, all you have to do is set out a sight of grace and then leave the game or just leave the game and get back into the game. And then really quickly, I just wanted to show you that I did get the items back that I had previously dropped for the other player. So essentially, all you're doing is deleting a cloud save and then it reverts you back to where you previously were. So make sure if you have been playing for a while, make sure at least leave the game and then get back in to reset the save in the cloud. In this next glitch, we're going to be doing the unlimited heal glitch using some equipment. So with this glitch, it's pretty easy to do and you can do it anywhere, anytime. And it's very useful if you're especially out of flasks and you're not by a side of grace. And all you have to do is just take a little bit of damage, of course, and then from there, I'll show you how to do it. So make sure you're not close to any enemies during this time because we are going to be getting into our, our equipment section into the start menu. So get into your equipment section, not your inventory. Your equipment section, go to your masks, and the two masks you need are going to be the Corollos mask and the Olivenous mask. And what you do is you just equip these back and forth and it heals you. So I'll just do it a couple more times here and then I will exit out and then you'll notice that my health is completely full from that nice little exploit. The next one is going to be a boss cheese here and the boss we are going to be cheesing is going to be the knife ringleader. And to get to this guy, you do have to complete the Rani's quest line because it is up on a cliff in Lakes of Liernia, and you cannot access it unless you have done the Rani's quest line. But anyways, once you're inside this, all you're going to do is you're going to run left. The boss will spawn, and then from there, you're going to go on this side of the cliff. He's going to run at you, and what you're going to want to do is try and trap him in this corner. So what you do is basically you just sit there in this corner and he cannot hit you. It is best done with a shield. So once you've got him trapped in this corner, you are free to hit him. Even if you stagger him, he will still stay in the corner. 
um, but you don't want to stab him if he does get staggered, else it will either throw you out of it or throw him out of it as well. And the next glitch we're going to have is going to be the Lord of Blood Cheese. And all you have to do for this is get on top of this spot right here. It just takes a few jumps. And then you can shoot the Lord of Blood with some arrows. This is best done with poison arrows since he is immune to most physical effects from this far away. So if you shoot him with some poison, he will take some blood loss. And then you can go in and fight him with his health a little bit down. So after you get those poison arrows, just shoot him until you notice poison damage is starting to take effect on his health. And then from there, all you have to do is just go into the boss room and however much health you took away from him from the damage, that's how much health he will have once you go into the boss fight. Also, if you do stagger him from the arrows and then you go in to fight him, he will not move because it will make the AI incomparable. And then you can just go up and hit him as many times as you want until he is dead. The next one, we have one of the rune falling methods at the across the roots site of grace. And this will give you some runes and some other special items. So once you're at the site of grace, just follow like I do on the path. I will say this one is quite annoying and I don't really prefer this one, but if you want the stuff in the area, then go ahead and do it. The reason it makes this annoying is because you have to jump past that and this jump can be a little bit hard. Usually you'll fall and fall to your death. Once you're on these, then you have to make another hard jump onto this branch right here to get up to those rocks. But once you've finagled your way around this nice little jump, then all you have to do is jump onto these rocks right here. Don't go to this spot like I did in the video. You're going to come around this tree right here and then you're going to arrive at this spot right here. Now from this spot right here, all you have to do is just jump into the abyss and of course swing your sword and then you have to wait until you get the items. I'm going to skip in this video just to show you the items that you receive after falling for about a minute or so. So after falling for about a minute to a minute and a half, you get some nice runes and then you also do get some Newman runes and some rune arcs from the area of the surrounding enemies. Again, I don't really recommend this one just because it's kind of a pain to get to, but if you want the stuff in the area, by all means, come and do this one. We have this glitch still currently working as well. We thought they had patched it, but nope, you can still get up to this rune falling method by going up this way from the side of grace. So it's a pretty easy one to do once you get the pathing down, and it's actually a little bit shorter than the other way, in my opinion. And then once you get up here, just make your way along this little area, and then you, of course you're going to jump off the cliff into the abyss. The next falling rune method we have is going to be at the freezing lake here. And what this will do is we'll be able to kill the freezing fog dragon here at the lake with this method. So just follow the path I do here in the video if you want these special items. I don't recommend really farming this area because you don't get a lot of runes. Um, this is kind of more of a one-time thing just so you can get the stuff and the special items from the area. So just keep making your way across the lake. You want to go straight towards this cliff right here, and then you're going to want to go to the right side of this cliff. So once you're to this area right here, you want to go to two birds, not that bird, but you want to go up just a little bit and you're going to see these two birds. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to jump northeast. That's going to prevent you from dying. So jump exactly how I do. It might take a couple of tries, but once you get it, you will just fall. And as you can see in this next attempt, I jump a little more northeast and I get out a little bit farther and you just continuously fall you'll know you've done it right because the map will start to despawn after about 30 to 40 seconds. And then from there, all you have to do is just wait for the enemies to be killed in the area, and then you can fast travel out of there safely. The next method here is also going to be another rune falling method, but this time we're going to be right at the Castle Salt entrance, Site of Grace, 
and then from here you're going to make your way around the castle and what this will do is it will basically kill the bosses in the area such as commander Niall. now i have already killed him so he will not show up and you have to do it in this specific spot for him to die if you do it in another spot that's also in this area he will not die so once you go under this archway right here what you want to do is just make your way left and then we're going to get to a cliff side here and from this cliff side this one's a little bit tricky you're gonna have to jump kind of east and then west so do exactly how i do it here in the video this one is definitely a little more tricky but once you get it down you will run into a few cliffs all you have to do is just slightly turn your horse a little bit and you'll be fine you'll hit the cliff but then you'll go right off the cliff and then you just have to continuously swing your sword until the enemies die in the area so pretty much it's just a waiting game once you fall now I will say you do not have to swing your sword every second of the way. There is a 13 second death barrier with these usually. So if you do not swing for 13 seconds, you will die. However, if you do swing once every 10 seconds or so, you will be fine as long as you're swinging every once in a while. The next one is, of course, I'm sure you all already know about it with this new patch, is going to be the Fire Giant Cheese. And this does work on a couple other bosses. Basically, all you're doing is trying to get blood loss buildup on them before they go into their second phases. So once you're fighting the Fire Giant, just try and get them to the second phase as fast as possible. Uh, while you're doing this, though, you want to try and inflict blood loss as close as you can to the second phase. So inflict some sort of blood loss pattern into that second phase and he's going to lose a bunch of health, if not die instantly. Now I wanted to skip forward a little bit just so I could show you what I mean. So I damaged him here to go into the second phase. I didn't really do it correctly, so I didn't get a ton of loss, but you did see that smidge of health come off and that is from the blood loss. Now if you do this correctly and if you can get the blood loss buildup, right before the second phase it will instantly kill him into that second phase making it an instant win however this does seem to be a little inconsistent so sometimes it doesn't always work but hey it's a nice little cheese and if you're having a tough time with this try and use something that will cause blood loss buildup The next glitch is going to be the same as the fire giant glitch. Basically all you're going to be doing is just inflicting as much blood loss as you can, but this is going to be for the godskin duo, one of the most annoying fights in the game. Now I know these guys don't have a second phase, but basically what we're going to be doing is just inflicting as much blood loss as possible. For this I'm using the rivers of blood katanas, and I'm just going to be trying to build that up as much as possible. Because if we're lucky, we can get a huge amount of health gone from them, if not instantly killing them. And if you want to skip towards the end of this clip, it's not very long. I am able to get that blood loss buildup glitch from the patch and pretty much instantly kill them. But I'll leave it till the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions or comments down in the comments, and I will leave a lot of these original videos in the description. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you next time. Hit the damn subscribe button already.